Maya and David met on a sunny afternoon at a cosy coffee shop. She was a regular, sitting by the window, sketching in her notebook, while he was a new face, reading an old paperback with dog-eared pages. They exchanged smiles, and it wasn't long before he approached the table. Mind if I sit down? he asked, his voice warm and friendly. Maya welcomed the company. They spent hours talking about art, books, and life. David was charming, attentive, and seemed to genuinely listen to her in a way she hasn't experienced before. They laughed, shared stories, and before they knew it, they were meeting at the coffee shop regularly. Soon enough, their casual dates turned into long walks in the park, and one evening, after weeks of blissful romance, they shared their first night together. Then, David suggested they move in together. For Maya, it felt right, natural, like the next chapter in their story. They rented a small apartment, filled with sunlight, plants, and Maya's favorite vase. It wasn't expensive or rare, bought at a local store nearby, but was a gift from her beloved grandmother before she passed away. Life felt perfect. But then things changed. At first, the changes were subtle. David began making small comments, like when she could not find her car keys. Are you sure you left your keys there? I could have sworn I saw you put them by the sink, he'd say. Then she would find her keys where he said they were. Maya would pause, confused. She was almost certain she had left them on the coffee table, but maybe he was right. She shrugged it off, laughing at herself for being forgetful. But the moments grew more frequent. David would suggest she had forgotten to lock the door, misplace a book, or left the stove on. Small things, easy to dismiss, but each time Maya felt a little more unsure of herself. One evening, after a particular long day at work, Maya came home to find the kitchen cabinets rearranged. Plates were where the cups used to be, and the pantry was in disarray. David, did you move everything around? She asked bewildered. He looked up from the couch, surprised. What are you talking about? I haven't touched anything. Are you sure you're feeling okay? Maya's stomach churned. She was certain everything had been different that morning, but his calm demeanor made her second guess herself. Maybe she was just tired. The next few weeks were filled with more confusion. Maya began to question everything she did. One night, David suggested they invite friends over for dinner. And during the evening, a small argument broke out over something trivial. A comment David made about her cooking. His tone was sharp. And in a moment of frustration, he swept his arm across the table, knocking over the vase. It shattered into a thousand pieces on the floor. Maya gasped, horrified. I'm so sorry, David said, his voice softening instantly. Regret flashed in his eyes. I didn't mean to. Let me clean it up. The tension in the room evaporated as David swept up the pieces. But a part of Maya felt unsettled. Something about the fight felt staged. That night, after David cleaned up and they went to bed, she lay awake for hours, her thoughts spinning. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, but exhaustion and then she pulled her into a restless sleep. The next morning, Maya awoke and walked into the living room, expecting to see the empty space where the vase had been. But there it was, sitting on the table, intact, as if nothing had happened. She blinked in confusion. David, how is the vase there? We, you broke it last night when we fought. David looked up from his coffee concern etched on his face. Maya, we didn't have a fight. What are you talking about? Maya's heart raced. But you knocked it over. You cleaned it up. I saw it. David's expression grew serious. Maya, I think you're confused. The vase is fine. We had a lovely evening last night. Maybe you are just stressed. You have been so forgetful lately. Losing things, mixing things up. I am worried about you. Maya's breath caught in her throat. She felt dizzy, disorientated. She could still hear the sound of a vase shattering in her mind, but there it was, whole, unbroken, as if the night before had never happened. Maybe, she whispered, shaking her head. 
Maybe I'm losing it. David put his hand on his shoulder, his voice gentle. I think you should talk to someone, Maya. Maybe a therapist. You've been acting strange for a while now, and I'm just worried about your mental health. I don't want to lose you. The words hit her like a wave. Was she going mad? Was everything she'd been questioning in her head real? Or was it all in her imagination? Three days passed, and Maya's sense of reality began to unravel further. She was afraid to bring up the incident again, terrified that maybe David was right. Maybe she did need help. But deep down, a part of her still clung to the truth she believed she had seen. Desperate for clarity, she met her close friend Sarah for coffee. You seem distant, Sarah said. Concern filled her eyes. What's going on? Maya hesitated, then poured out everything. The misplaced keys, the rearranged cabinets, the vase. And David's insistence that none of it had happened the way she remembered. As she spoke, tears welled up in her eyes. Am I losing my mind? Sarah? David thinks I need help. Maybe he's right. Sarah leaned in, her expression serious. Maya, this isn't you losing your mind. This sounds like gaslighting. Gaslighting? Maya repeated, unfamiliar with the term. It's when someone manipulates you into questioning your own reality. It starts small, with things like moving objects or making you feel forgetful, and it builds up over time until you don't trust your own memory or judgment. He's making you doubt yourself on purpose, Maya. Maya's heart sank as the pieces clicked into place. Every moment, every doubt, every small change, it was all part of a larger pattern. Sarah reached for her hand. You're not crazy. He's trying to make you believe that you are. But you're not. To prove it to yourself, when you place your car keys down tonight, secretly take a picture on your phone. When it magically appears somewhere else, you will have proof on your phone that you did place it where you remembered you did. That night, Maya took a picture of her car keys on the coffee table. She also snapped a picture of the clothes she put out to wear the next morning. Early the next morning she got up. She looked at the pile of clothes and then at the car keys on the nightstand. Without saying a word, Maya grabbed the phone and went to the bathroom. Her throat tightened as she stared at the pictures she had taken the night before. The clothes were changed to a different set, and the car keys had clearly been moved from a coffee table to the nightstand. Her hands trembled as she held the phone. Yet, a small amount of doubt remained. David had before claimed she sleepwalks and moves stuff around. Maya went on with her morning as normal and left for work before David, but only drove around the block and waited for him to leave home. Then she went back. He had put the garbage out for collection earlier than usual. Her heart pounded in her chest as she searched the bags. Then she found it, the shattered pieces of a vase. The truth hit her like a freight train. He actually bought a new vase to use in his plan to make her think she is losing her mind. With undeniable proof before her eyes, Tears of frustration and betrayal stung her eyes. But beneath the pain, a new resolve began to form. She wasn't losing her mind. David was manipulating her. The charming, attentive man she had fallen in love with was slowly chipping away at her sense of self, trying to control her by making her doubt her own reality. And now she had the evidence to prove it. Maya's mind cleared, and for the first time in weeks, she felt a surge of strength. She wasn't broken. He was. Learn more about narcissism by watching the video suggested to you right now.